Hi, so today I have with me Micah, and Micah and I have met in a uh, a business entrepreneurs group, at, you know, and uh, so I have a podcast, he reached out to me, and he's got a great journey and a story that I believe he is, I, I know he's willing to share it, but I believe it's going to touch a lot of people. Um, I had the chance to talk to Micah for a little bit prior to this, so I got to know a little bit about what he has to share with you guys. Uh, so I'm going to just open it up to him and, you know, please feel free to start off with, you know, who you are, what you're doing, you know, and then we could, we could dive into your journey of how you got to where you are today and go in that direction. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me too. I sure. really appreciate it. So my name is Mikey. Yacht. I, uh, have written a few books, um, started a, uh, website that's specifically a social media website that focuses on education and connection i'm looking to reform the education system um, i'm building that slowly but i'm focused now on trying to reach uh, men and help them with their mental health um, either through my direct influence or any way that i can help my story is kind of it's kind of a tragic one um but i have a feeling that a lot of people can relate so this past year um, i recently went through a divorce i know a lot of men go through divorces and in our country it's not exactly easy on them just by the way the system is set up um a wife of 12 years, she was being unfaithful to me. So I decided to either, or I had to decide to either try to work through it or leave. And I decided to leave, which was a hard decision because we do have a daughter that's six years old. So in order to see my daughter still, I had to have some type of residence. Um, and I wasn't exactly financially set to just simply go and get a new place. So I had to bite the bullet and I had to move in with my parents, which is not something a man wants to do at such a late age. But it was a choice I had to make. So I get to see my daughter half of the week. Unfortunately, I do have to live with my parents until I get up and running again. So this past uh, eight, nine months, I've been hustling every day to try to build something. Build a, a new foundation. So I've written a few books. Uh, I've written a screenplay. I'm trying to get up and running. I made a graphic novel. I've designed the website, like I was saying. I've co-authored a book. And I just keep creating until something helps Let's get going. Mm -hmm. um, the hardest part, I think, with divorce is just the change of routine and trying to maintain some sort of balance with the kids. Uh, trying to help them through the, the change. So we're pretty versatile, um, adaptable as adults, but children need that foundation. Luckily, I have a pretty good support system here with my family. Um, they, uh, love my daughter so that made it very easy as far as that goes um, even though they don't agree with me and my decisions they're very uh, conservative conservative christian so divorce is not something they're uh, fond of to say the least um, so i decided to do that 
make that choice. And I've had to stick with that decision. Uh, unfortunately, it hasn't been easy because the growing up in this environment wasn't exactly easy. Um, my family, they're uh, very challenging, challenging people. Uh, I'm sure some people have heard of the term narcissism. And if they haven't, uh, there's a certain term, I think it's covert narcissism and grandiose narcissism that I believe is where they fall under. And these types, they're a bit ruthless when it comes to controlling other people, especially if you're not that way. And uh, when I was a child, I was always extremely sensitive emotionally, which is, it's kind of like, you know, I, I usually refer to as like blood in the water for a nurse as an emotionally sensitive person. Because they want to control, manipulate any way they can. And if you are emotionally sensitive or vulnerable in some way, it makes it very easy for them to insult or manipulate. Luckily, I'm not a child anymore, so I'm more well equipped to handle it as an adult. But it does take a certain level of boundaries establishing them and self-love and I think that's really what this whole journey is about and the fact that we repeat cycles as people from childhood to adulthood the type of love that we're used to it's the type of love that we're going to look for in our partners So my ex could easily be described as overt narcissist. And that's the type of love that I thought I deserved. So I would serve as a relentless people pleaser with very little self-love to a covert narcissist as a supply for about 12 years. And that was, it was a bit difficult, to say the least. And I think what changed everything was just that I got to such a low point in my self-worth that I was either going to kill myself or I was going to change something. I decided to change everything instead. And I'm sure most men know that if you go through divorce, especially with somebody that is manipulative and abusive, they're not going to make it easy for you. So it hasn't been very easy. If I had to deal with a lot of challenges trying to separate. But there's always a way. And I want men to know that. You don't have to stay with somebody because you're afraid. You're afraid of losing everything. Afraid of losing your kids. Because you won't. There's a way to get out. It's not hopeless. 
That's what I'm doing now. I had to give up everything. I had to give up my income. I had to give up my home. And I had to give up half of my time with my daughter in order to have freedom and self-love. It's not easy. No one ever says it's going to be. But I think self-love is more important than comfort. Yeah. Um, I could have cut in a lot, a lot right there, but I don't want to because you know, I'm, I'm sure you have maybe a little bit more you could share too. But I will share with you a little bit of me. I've gone through it in the past two years as well. So I understand where you're coming from. And I know there's a lot of men just like us that are going through it or will be going through it. Right. And it is tough. It's tough for a man that I would say really had deep love, right. For, I mean, we, we love unconditionally, really, you know what I mean? That's, it, you know, so it's, it's tough for a man. And, you know, uh, I know somebody that's helped me a little bit along the way. And he's, he, t I'll tell you, the statistics are 10 men commit suicide every day because of this reason, you know, because they mentally just can't take it, you know? And, uh, and what is it? Most women file for divorce and stuff like that. But, you know, so, you know, I, I can relate with exactly where you're coming from. It, so, I, you know, for me, it was kind of like a clean slate in a sense. You, you do lose a lot, but you are growing. You're becoming better. You know what I mean? You're finding your true self. And, you know, I believe that's what's really more important than after a while you, you, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you can answer this for me. Do you feel like you lost yourself along the way? I would say that I have lost, I had to grieve the loss of my former self mm -hmm. because it he no longer exists. But I wouldn't say that I am lost. I think I've gained more by allowing that person to die. Mm hmm. Yeah, I can see that. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so, you know, before we touch on exactly how you're helping people and everything else, uh, you, you mentioned boundaries and stuff. And I, I know you mentioned that, you know, with people around you and everything like that. So what can you explain like what a boundary is in your eyes, right, in your opinion, and then what it is, how you how you set those boundaries up? Because I know that people are hesitant to do that because they're afraid of making somebody feel bad, right? So I'll, I'll let you answer on that. I completely understand that. That was one of the biggest hurdles for me to get started was learning how to establish a boundary. Um, because, like I said, I was I was kind of indoctrinated to be a people pleaser, just earn love instead mm -hmm. of deserving love to establish a boundary for myself i think that's where it starts is hold myself to a boundary an expectation and not allow myself to bend on it so if i established a boundary with myself and i was strict with myself then i would be obligated to be strict with somebody else an example would be, I am not going to allow myself to say anything negative about myself or be demeaning in any way. So if somebody else was, I it was obligated to correct. And that, that's one that you set up for yourself? Yeah. Yeah. One that initially happened right off the bat was an old, an old routine or an old cycle of um, bullying into submission uh, to get their way. Um, 
that was something that I was routinely used to. If I voiced my opinion and it was contradictory, uh, a family member would attempt to intimidate or threaten in order to get me to submit their, to their way. Mm -hmm. So that was the first kind of boundary I had to establish was I am not going to allow myself to intimidate myself or bully myself into submission, into giving in. So I'm not going to allow somebody else to do it either. Yeah. So, I mean, that's tough, right? So, I mean, what, what kind of like process was this for you to say, you're not doing this to me anymore? Mm. It was really a long period of reflection. Um, it took a lot of looking into myself and who I was as a person and what did I want for myself? Who did I want to become? Or who was I already that I wasn't allowing to be? Those were the questions I kept asking myself. And I would have to write down as much as possible to keep myself organized. So I would journal, and write mm -hmm. down daily what it is I want and who is who it is I want to be. And so so you created this, that became a habit, I guess. Are you still doing that? Yeah. Yeah. And what, what feeling or what ideas or thoughts are you getting from this to make you feel like you're, you're you, you know, you're this person now and that you're, you're not dealing with what it was before. Right. So you became somebody totally different. Right. So, I mean, what, what are you feeling? What are you feeling now? I mean, you, you obviously you're still, you're still going through things. You're still growing, but uh, good. You know, you know, what are you feeling? What do I feel right now? Um, I guess the best way to describe it is empowered. Mm -hmm. I feel, I feel like, I am an ancient warrior living in the modern times. I feel like I am part God. I feel like I am, I have accepted death. As the last result. Yeah. All right. Um, I I would totally agree with what you're saying. Uh, you get to a certain point. I mean, it, it takes a long time, right? I, I don't I don't want to say I'm there yet my, myself. I still have a whole bunch of stuff I want to accomplish. But you get to that point where you're kind of just, personally, I feel like I'm at peace, right? I, I keep saying that to people and they're like, yeah, I get it. And I don't get it, right? It depends on who you're talking to. So, you know, when you're sharing your story, it depends on who you're talking to, if they're going to understand it or not, you know, um, but there's so many different terms we could use and you, but that's, that's, that's how I feel right now. I feel at peace. I'm, I'm, I'm connecting with people like yourself and I'm enjoying life, you know, this moment. And so now you're in a situation now where you're able to express yourself. And I, I do want to say, I appreciate you being very vulnerable here and coming out and saying what you're saying, because um, I know I'm in some men's groups too and everything, and there's people chit-chatting and stuff in there, but a lot of the men out there don't look for help, right? They, they, they don't seek it because they feel like they can't because they're not a man then, right? That's, this is how I perceive it. And, you know, you can share your words on this too. Um, but I mean, what, what kind of words and stuff would you say to somebody, you know, that might be going down this road or, or, you know, something like this, you know, to kind of lift them up or kind of encourage them into seeking help? Um, I would probably say if I was talking to somebody that was in my position before mm -hmm. that was afraid to take the step or the leap, that the greatest things are always on the other side of fear and that if 
they're afraid of it failing or not working out. Maybe think about the possibility of it actually working. The, the reality that what you're thinking about or dreaming about will work and start mm -hmm. focusing on that instead of the fear of it failing, crashing and burning. Yeah. And, and if we were talking relationship wise, it, it does take two, right? So it, both parties have to be involved. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if one's going drift in some direction, then obviously that you can't, can't control that. So the thing I like, I like when I, you know, went through all this stuff and I hear, you know, you, you can only control what you can control, right? You can't control the other person. You can't control the world. You know I mean? It's, it's your, your world. You can only control yourself. And that's completely right. I, I, it took me a while to figure that out. Um, and then the other, the other one I like to share too is, you know, it's not, it's not happening to you. It's happening for you. So, you know, it's something else, you know, I, I've learned and carried through everything. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, so let, let's just touch in, you, you, you want to help men with mental health, right? And so uh, what is exactly that you are aiming and how are you aiming to help these men with, you know, with their mental health? Uh, well, the first thing I did was the graphic novel that I wrote. Mm -hmm. It's it focuses on overcoming trauma and our ego uh, in a more entertaining way. So that was the first thing I did. I'm trying to reach people through entertainment because I feel like just simply coming at them and saying, I want to help you, it's not going to work. People don't, uh, I shouldn't say people, most men, they don't want help. It makes them feel weak because they have to admit that they need help. So I figure if I can entertain them, maybe that will open the door. So I created a superhero and a comic book or a graphic novel. And I'm looking to make it into a film at some point. So maybe that'll help reach them. Hmm. I would like to reach out and join as many groups as possible to help just share my story with them and show them that there is a way. Maybe so, that's all they need. Yeah. And then that, that might be just the beginning, right? Yeah. So, and so let's just say after the fact of they get your novel and stuff, what, is there something else after that, that you can assist them with? Uh, yeah, I'm um, designing the, um, the ARC website. It's mm -hmm. uh, education and connection. It's going to reform the education system, and I'm going to support the educators uh, with generational wealth so that they can slowly build um, wealth by just sharing their passion. And I'm hoping men will be a part of it. I'm hoping women will as well, but I feel like that will help. Great. And when, so you're just starting that out. When do you think that would kick off? It's just started, so I'm uh, building and marketing it. Okay. Um, I would say it would probably take a few years before it starts really getting momentum. Mm -hmm. I would say within the next five years, the education system is going to shift from what it is now to being completely online. And this is what I'm going to use it for, to reform the education system. Okay. Great. And then, uh, so is there like a, a way people can connect with you and get to learn more about yourself and maybe they can, I don't know if you do, you know, 30 minute calls or something like that, you know, they get to know each other or not. Yep. Yeah. I, um, I have a uh, zoom. I use it regularly to meet with people for about a half hour or so and just do one-on-ones mm -hmm. information and get to know each other, support each other if we can, any possible way. And I'm always open to meet with people and talk. It's one of my favorite things to do is just to listen to people's stories and offer any type of insight that I can. Yeah. And uh, so uh, these people, 
um, is it mostly men? Is it, is it, is it primarily that you're aiming for? I mean, I know the education part, you were going both ways, I think. I mean, I, I do, I am not opposed to helping women with their struggles mm -hmm. and relationships, uh, especially mm -hmm. from a man's perspective. There's actually a book that I'm reading that is written by a woman that is absolutely brilliant. It's called um, Men Need Love Too by Marina Lazarus. Okay. Uh, I can leave a link for that. Um, if if you could wrap up exactly what, uh, what we've been talking about, essentially, in a book, it would be that book. Okay. I'll raise that one Um. Yeah, and you know, I'll spin this off a little bit here, and then you know, go full further. But you know, look, looking at social media and everything else like that, you know, you see, you know, feminism, and you know, the men are kind of coming down here. You know, the lower level and everything like that. But I just want to see what you're. You know, I. I could go on and on. Right. But I'm sure you see the same stuff. You mind sharing your thoughts on what you're thinking about, you know, things going on in society and, and how we're kind of, we're not really coming together. We're separating. I feel like we're, I feel like there's an area where we're slowly coming back, you know what I mean? But it's, it's far, you know? Yeah. So what are your thoughts on that? You're right. You're right. There's definitely a division going on. Um, so since I was a child, um, I've always paid attention to patterns, picked up on patterns mm -hmm. um, and human behavior. I would always watch people. So I would say, from my perspective, we are slowly being programmed as a society to separate, either through media or what have you. And it you would be surprised how easy it is to manipulate large amounts of people into doing something. And we as men are heavily influenced by the behavior of women. So if you can wrap your head around just that concept alone, you would only need to influence a large number of women to act a certain way to then affect a large amount of men. Mm. So I think this occurred about 10, 10 years ago or so, started, and it's slowly making more and more headway. Um, and I think what's happening is the feminism movement and various other movements that encourage division or hyper independence away from the nuclear family. I think anything that encourages that type of division is part of the programming to separate us, separate man from woman, because it's much easier to control population who are separated. And it's the greatest separation of all compared to, let's say, politics or religion or anything else. If you can separate a man from a woman, that's everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I, thank you. I appreciate sharing that. I, I agree there. Yeah. So um, uh, how, how can people connect with you? What's the easiest way? Um, Facebook would probably be the easiest. Okay. Um, I usually am on there marketing myself. Um, but I'm on all types of social media, Instagram, TikTok. Okay. But Facebook's your primary one. Yeah. If you want to okay. have like a Zoom call or something. All right. Be the easiest. All right. Great. And I'll set that up. I'll put that in the show notes and everything. Um so I I have a question I ask everybody at the end. So you know and feel free to go as long as you want or whatever here. But you know what are three key things you've learned and used along your journey? Mm. I'd say the first and most important thing to finding self-love mm -hmm. is patience, being patient with yourself because you're trying to do something. You're trying to create a new path 
in your mind instead of following the same old path. And it's so hard to create a new path. It's so easy to fall back on your old patterns. And when you're trying to create a new path, you have to be patient with yourself. So patience is the first thing. The other thing that I would say would be to breathe. We really focus on breathing too much. Such an unconscious thing. But if you can consciously breathe with intention, it takes a lot of the pain out of it. it. Slows everything down. The more often you do that, the easier it becomes. Especially when you're upset or you're feeling doubt. Because doubt's a big one. Self-doubt. That was one of the hardest things I've had to struggle with, is self-doubt. I still do. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of like a wild animal that you li you literally are wrangling in every single day. Just breathe through it. And then the last one would be physical exercise. As a man, and probably as for women as well, but specifically talking about men, we need physical exercise. We need to be physical. If we're not, we're not living. Right. I agree with you. Uh, so I, exercise would be like one of my number ones. It definitely changes you physically and mentally, right? It puts you in a different state of mind. Um, yes. now I'm just going to go backwards here. You know, breathing, I, it's a big one. It, you're probably the first guest I've had that said that, but, you know, and there's different ways people can breathe and, you know, you can go out and look at it and, you know, which is crazy. He would never even think about it, but, uh, it could just see even three deep breaths, right. Calm you down, you know, and that, and that's like the one I really know, but I know there's a whole bunch out there. So definitely check that out. You know, if that's something that you're interested in and, you know, uh, and I would just patience. I, you know, that, it, everything takes time you know it, it, we live in this world where everybody wants everything now you know and pa patience is, is that's a big one so you know i don't i don't usually backtrack with you know this these answers but these were you know the you hit you hit some uh some triggers here i guess you could say you know some yeah so i feel it i know i know where you're coming from but uh micah if you have anything else you'd like to share you know feel free to share it now well, thank you for having me and having a conversation with me. I really appreciate it, especially just connecting with somebody. It's so difficult to be alone all the time mm -hmm. or feel all alone all the time. Right. I, and you're welcome. And I appreciate you coming on and sharing your story, being vulnerable, you know, which is huge. Uh, I, you know, I, men, women, whatever, you know, just opening up is like a, a huge relief in itself, you know? Um, but yeah, no, I appreciate you coming on and, and being open and honest. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome.